And there I find peace Cause there I find peace again Thank you, Dallas. And, uh, you know, that song... I look to the cross. Why do we why do we look to the cross at this time of the year? Why do we why do we think about the cross so much? Um it, I think it's because of the significance of what Jesus going to the cross was all about. Now, he had had quite the day and you know, the sun is just setting here in our city and as the day uh, grew to a close, they we looked back on a day that was filled with so much, really, so much torture and so much, really, testing of, of Jesus, his, the resolve that he had, that he'd been given a purpose. He came with a purpose. And, you know, we think of it's the day started off with um, Pilate and the whole trial thing. And it, it really was a bit of a kangaroo court in a sense that, that Pilate didn't really want to crucify Jesus, but, but they were, they were, they put him between a rock and a hard place and saying, you know, you you have to, you have to crucify him because he claims he's a king and, and he can't be a king. And, and uh, you know, the so Pilate, at first he started off with having Jesus just um, like the Bible says flogged in the in the New Living Translation. But really he was whipped and it was he was whipped with a, um, you know, a, a, it was a Roman whip that had. Uh, long lashes and uh, pieces of metal in the end that would tear the flesh as they whipped him. And yet, in all of that, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, whipped to death. And they, they, you know, history reports that the Roman soldiers could have been so aggressive and so torturous that they would have killed him from the whipping, but, but they didn't. They stopped because that was prophetic. You know, the Bible says that in Isaiah, Jesus, you know, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The, the whipping and the bruising and the torture was part of what Jesus had to endure that day in order to be able to pay for not just our salvation, but our sicknesses and all of that too for our salvation. And, and so then they, they uh, you know, Pilate thought, well, maybe that's enough. And so he went back to them again and he said, uh, he said, you know, okay, uh, how's that? And the, and the leaders, it says in, um, I think it's in verse 6. I'm reading from uh, John chapter 19. In verse 6, the, the leading priests and temple guards uh, yelled out, Crucify him, crucify him. They, they wanted him put to death. He, he, he was a threat to everything they believed. And it's so sad because really they were the religious leaders of the day. Where was their compassion? Where was their, you know, the heart of God? But no, they, they saw him as a threat and they wanted to, to turn, you know, they wanted him to be put to death. And so they, so Pilate said, okay, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll crucify him. And so they take him and verse, uh, verse 16, Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. And so they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place uh, called the Golgotha, which would be the place of the skull. And, and uh, there they nailed him to the cross. And, you know, there were significant things that happened on that day. And, uh, I mean, w when we think about the, the events that surrounded that day and, you know, just so many supernatural things. Not only was Jesus uh, fulfilling so many prophecies, that many, many Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled just by the whole process of that. Everything from, from uh, you know, Palm Sunday all the way through to, to the resurrection. There were prophecies being fulfilled over and over and over, right? But there was four significant things that did happen that day. And one of them was uh, that there was an unexplained darkness that covered the earth for three hours. So it'd be as if we're here and it'd be broad daylight and then all of a sudden a darkness comes. Now, if anybody's experienced like a, a, a total eclipse or something like that, it would be like that. And that darkness covered the earth for three hours, but it was unexplained and they didn't know what was going on, right? And keeping in mind that they had said... Um they had said, if you're the king of the Jews, why don't you come down from the cross? Right. And just think about what that took for Jesus, knowing that he could have. Yep. And probably, um, you know, 
did away with every one of the soldiers, everyone that was there that had beaten him and hurt him. Yeah. And they were mocking him. And yeah. they even nailed a, a sign on the cross that said, you know, Jesus, King of the Jews, right? Yeah. And I always think about that. When it got dark, that must have been just so, so incredible <laughs> to think that if they had wondered if he was, you know, Jesus, they wouldn't have been wondering anymore yeah. when it went completely yeah. dark right yeah. it, it was just like a supernatural sign and then another thing that happened that day when when jesus was on the cross was that the veil that uh that uh, at the temple that uh, per, you know like it was kind of the separated yeah that's right it separated the outer courts from the inner holy place and where the high priest could only go once a year that veil was torn but it wasn't just torn it was torn from the top to the bottom and that would be just an unexplainable event and it was a thick curtain but what you know when we think about that just say what the purpose was for the curtain being torn right it was so that we could be, yeah, right? That no longer would there be any separation between us and Jesus and God. And yeah. so that that was significant to know that no more was it just one priest that could go into God's presence. From then on, right. we could all enter into his presence. Amen. We all have access because the veil was torn and that was significant. Jesus yeah. made a way for us to come into the Father's presence. And then there was an earthquake that took place. But And <laughs> I, I, apparently earthquakes were not uncommon in that uh, in that area, in the, the uh, that Middle Eastern area. But in this case, the earthquake was so violent that even rocks cracked apart. Yeah. Like think about that. Yeah. Think about some rocks or boulders just breaking <laughs> apart into pieces. Yeah. And that was also prophetic because the it was just like God himself was just almost reaching out and saying, this is my son, pay attention, right? And then this one, I, I just, I, I always forget about this, but it says that many tombs were opened and, and believers who had died were raised and came out of those tombs and were walking around and went into town. And, yeah. and it's like, hey, I'm here. Remember me? I, I died, you know, a couple of months ago. And all of a sudden these guys are walking around. And even that. I know, if, if any of you have ever been to, I mean, we all have stood by the grave of someone that we love and i often think about that what that will be like um someday when those graves will be opened again <laughs> amen but that day there were graves that were opened and people actually came to life just absolutely amazing <laughs> that is pretty amazing but just yeah. think about that you know wow. that alone like <laughs> i mean that would get your attention i tell you that would definitely right yeah. so but the thing is you know i mean we think of the cross as being the defining moment in a sense that jesus came why to die for every one of us right and and i think of the people like it says that you know mary and uh, and jesus mother uh, mary and then the other mary magdalene and then some other ladies that were there gathered there by the cross just you know how must they have felt i mean I, you know, I, I can't either. Like, we have three boys, and I can't imagine, like, any one of them having to go through something like that. Just think what Mary's, like, Mary, Mary his mom, what she must have thought, yeah. what she must have felt seeing her very son being crucified on a cross like that, right? And uh, really, the verse that comes to mind is uh, John 3.16, and we've all heard it many, many times. I'm going to read it in the Passion. It says it this way. It says, For here is the way that God loved the world. He gave His only unique Son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in Him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. That is why Jesus gave His life on that cross the question today is, what are you facing in your life? Are you facing a dark time? Maybe you're going through a time and it, you know, it's not three hours. Maybe it's been three months or three years or maybe longer even. A dark time in your life. But you know what? We're here to tell you today that when Jesus died on that cross, when he willingly went to that cross, he did it for you. Amen. And he did it for me to bring hope for all of us to give us a hope that when there seems to be no way, God will make a way. When there seems to be no hope, Jesus 
is the answer. Dallas, I'm going to just invite you to sing a couple more songs now as we um, just reflect on that and think about what it meant for Jesus to give his life on the cross. There'll never be a 
God like you, a love so true, there has never been, there will never be, a God like you, a love so true, how great, how great, how great is your love, how great, how great, how great. his love the love of Jesus transcends all barriers it reaches all people Jesus love was for all of us there's not one person that can't benefit from it. the sacrifice that he made on that cross 2 Corinthians 5 says this for it is Christ's love that fuels our passion and holds us tightly because we are convinced that he has given his life for all of us all all of us all of us all of us here all of you there all of us he's given his life for us this means it all died with him so that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed lives but lives that are poured out for him the one who died for us now lives again. Jesus died so that we might have life. That's why he went to the cross. And you know what? Let me just say this. If you have not experienced that love today, today is the perfect day to accept Jesus into your life. Just stop and say, God, I don't, I, I don't know why I've waited this long, but... Please come into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love. And just redeem my life so that I can live. And as we said in the verse John 3.16, so that you can experience that everlasting life with Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Let's just close maybe this time with a word of prayer and Father, we just thank you and praise you that you love us so much. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you so much for the sacrifice that he was on the cross for us. And so, Lord, we put our trust in you. Lord, I pray for every person that's out there that's maybe never experienced your love. Lord, just touch their life. Just touch their life today and make them new. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does
the 